If you grew up in the South like me, then you knew that there was a chance on any given Sunday that you were probably going to have either cabbage or collard greens. Today, we're making cabbage. And I'll be honest and say that cabbage was just not my favorite thing growing up. I mean, I was never opposed to it, but the flavor was like, mm, it's okay. Until I started making it myself. Now, once I started making it on my own, my husband fell in love. <laughs> He is obsessed with my cabbage. So let me show you how I make it. I start by removing the core from my cabbage and then I remove the outer leaves from the cabbage. That's just the part that bit, that's been bumped and bruised and touched. So I like to go ahead and get rid of it. I promise it won't make a difference in the amount of cabbage that you have in the end. So now that I removed that core for the stability and remove those leaves, I'm gonna cut the cabbage in half, okay? And I cut my cabbage in half because this also helps me get rid of that core right there in the middle. So I like to create like a little triangle around the core in the cabbage and pop it right out. And as you can see here, it did not take much of the cabbage with it. So this is great if you're worried about that you'll be fine i promise and i'm just gonna go in and do that same thing to the other half and get that core right on out of there because no one wants to bite into something so hard <laughs> and so flavorless so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of it and that is that see how easy that was now we're gonna go in and cut the cabbage in quarters so for me, I find that it's easier for me to manage if I take that half piece and I cut it one more time in the middle. And I'm also the type of person who loves to eat my cabbage in slithers or smaller pieces. I don't really know how to say it, but y'all y'all are seeing, you see what I'm talking about? It's not necessarily shredded, but it's not thick pieces of cabbage either it's like the perfect size to scoop up or uh scoop up with a spoon twirl around on a fork I don't know how to explain it y'all it's just perfect so that part you can kind of use to your own discretion however you want to cut your cabbage is completely up to you but now you see how I like to do it and I will say that by creating smaller pieces like how I did it does stretch your cabbage a little bit longer so if you're feeding a bigger family, then this will definitely help you to stretch out the cabbage without having to buy too many heads of cabbage. Now, if you choose to do it bigger and bigger pieces, then that's totally fine. It'll cook the same exact way. It's all about you and your preference. So while I'm getting ready to finish that up, I wanna say that I, I, I wondered if you all noticed that I haven't been putting music in my videos. And if you have and you wonder why, I do that because I felt like I just want to build some type of relationship with you all. I really don't talk as much in my videos and I really want to change that because contrary to what y'all might believe, I have a personality outside of these cooking videos. So I really want it to shine through in my videos, if that makes sense. Plus, I love talking and honestly, being a mom, a stay at home mom, you just don't get the opportunity to talk as much as you'd like. But now that my cabbage is all cut up, we're going to move on to the stuff that adds the flavor, okay? And don't forget, wash your cabbage, y'all. Wash it until that water runs clean. So I'm going to start with some smoked sausage. I'm going to start go in with some bacon, and I'm going to go in with some onion and garlic. Now, I like to use smoked sausage because it definitely helps add on to the flavor but it also helps with the stench of the cabbage. So if you're one of those people who just can't figure out why your cabbage has that, that smell to it when you open the pot, it's because you got to start adding in some smoked meats. It just helps with that flavor. It helps with the aroma. It just gives it everything it needs to have, you know? So I went ahead and cut up half a link of smoked sausage and set that aside in a bowl. Now I'm going to go in with three pieces of bacon. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that into small pieces just so that it can render out some fat and add some flavor into our cabbage as well. And then I'm going to go in with a quarter piece of a yellow onion. 
to some this may seem like a lot of onion and cabbage and if you feel that way definitely use as much as you want to use if you ever look in my description boxes it always says to alter things how you want to um, unless I say otherwise in my videos but for the most part in anything I ever make you can alter it to your liking and then I'm gonna go in with half a teaspoon of minced garlic you can definitely use fresh garlic I just find that minced garlic um, in a jar like this is just more time um, more it just helps more without my, with my time okay <laughs> can't even get all my words out but now that everything is cooked we're just gonna set that all to the side and move on to cooking so I'm just gonna dump it all into my pot and get it nice and cooked down um, as you can see I did not add any butter any oil or anything like that to the bottom of my pot because the bacon and the sausage will render out enough fat so that we don't need to even think about doing that and as you can see at the bottom there's definitely some oil forming at the bottom and if you're worried you do not want to get rid of that oil why because this will add to the flavor of the cabbage i cannot stress this enough cabbage is one of those things that i absolutely love because you can build the flavor you can really take it from nothing to something extraordinary now that that has cooked down for about five to six minutes we're going to go in with half of our cabbage i like to go in with half of the cabbage because i like to give it all a chance to get to the bottom of the pan okay here's what i mean after about five to eight minutes of my cabbage kind of wilting down in the pan i'm going to fold that cabbage so all of the cabbage on top can work its way to the bottom and have a chance to cook evenly all throughout the pot. Now, once I gave that a good mix, I'm just gonna add in the other half of the cabbage. And we're just gonna repeat this step until our cabbage is cooked perfectly through to our desired doneness. Now, I'm the type of person who does not like my cabbage super crunchy, but I also don't like it mushy either. So cook your cabbage for as long as you need to, but remember to taste everything in between. And you're probably looking like, Mahogany, where is the seasoning in this cabbage? I know you talked about the meats and the onion and the garlic, but where are the seasonings? Don't worry. I'm definitely going to add some seasonings in there. After about 15 to 20 minutes of wilting down our cabbage, we're now ready to add in the flavor. So we're going to go in with some chicken broth. This is half a cup. And I like to add some chicken broth to my cabbage just because I like some extra juices to pour over my rice. I am definitely a white rice type of girl. And this cabbage over this white rice definitely does the thing for me. So I like to cook my cabbage down until it's not too crunchy, but it's not mushy either. It's the perfect doneness for me. Definitely taste as you go until you feel like you have that desired texture. Then I'm going to go in with my seasonings. This is onion powder, garlic powder, chicken seasoning, and black pepper. And then I'm going to go in with a pinch of sugar and a tablespoon of butter. Now this helps with cutting through the bitterness in the cabbage. So if you ever wonder why does somebody add sugar, that's why. And you're just going to give that a constant mix and remember to taste everything. Look at that broth. Mm, 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 mm. But if you give this a try, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, y'all.